their votes last night. Meanwhile, let's bring in Arkansas's finest, uh, Senator, GOP, Senator from the GOP, Senator Tom Cotton, member of the Senate Intel Committee. Senator, uh, so far I know in the past you've said you supported the president's push uh, when it comes to finding out what happened in these battleground states. But as uh, Karl Rove says today, unless there's something systemic wrong with these voting, it looks like this is going to be uh, uh, too big of a mountain to climb. Do you agree? Good morning, Brian. Good morning. Well, there's no doubt that there's multiple states in which the president would need to come from behind um, or have a significant number of ballots disqualified due to some of the troubling instances of fraud that Griff just covered. Uh, but they're still counting votes in Arizona. They're going to do a manual recount in Georgia. There are lawsuits filed in other country or in other states like Pennsylvania and Michigan. I think we have the time to let the president pursue all of these remedies. I don't remember these Democrats in 2000 telling Al Gore the week after the election that it was time to concede. And of course, Democrats in 2016 never really did concede. They immediately moved to the fake Russia collusion hoax and try to undermine the legitimacy of the president's uh, first term. Sure. So I think we have more than enough time to reach an orderly resolution using existing legal procedures to ensure that every legal vote counts and no illegal votes are counted. And in fact, you mentioned Georgia. Uh, we had the Secretary of State, uh, a Republican, Brad Raffensperger, on with us uh, less than an hour ago, Senator. And he was talking about how in that state, uh, rather than do an audit, which is often standard practice uh, in a situation like this, they're going to actually look at an audit is just essentially they take a sample and then they estimate how it would uh, span the entire election. They're actually going to look at each piece of paper for this reason. Watch. Because we're conducting a risk limiting audit, uh, it really triggers then a statewide recount. We would have had to pull out 1.5 million ballots anyway. And it's just easier to pull out all 5 million and just recount every single one of them. We're going to have an open and transparent process. But certification uh, by the, the Office of Secretary of State is November 20th. That's our goal. And the county said they can, the big counties told us yesterday that, that they can hit it. They'll be working overtime. They'll be working hard. It's a big lift. At the end of the day, you may not like the results, but it'll be an accurate recount. And we'll know exactly what the vote totals are. I wonder if there's a possibility, Senator, that after this uh, manual recount, they could actually find enough votes for David Perdue that puts him over 50. I don't know if that's possible, but that would change everything. Well, Steve, it certainly would. Uh, as your viewers probably know, in Georgia, a candidate needs more than 50 percent to avoid a runoff. Senator Perdue fell just short of it, just a few thousand votes short of it. And while they conduct this manual recount for the presidential race, of course, they'll be reviewing the other races as well. But whether or not that happens, uh, it is vital that we elect David Perdue and Kelly Leffler back to the United States Senate to stop Chuck Schumer from doing what he said on the streets of New York last weekend. We take Georgia, we change America. That's really the stakes of this election. Chuck Schumer laid it out perfectly well. That's probably the basis on which Georgians are going to be voting. And I suspect that most Georgians don't want to change America along the lines of Chuck Schumer's wishes. Well, remember when Chuck Schumer said this just a few days ago? Now we take Georgia, and then we change the world. Yeah! I'm sorry, can you repeat that, Mr. Schumer? Now we take Georgia, and then we change America. Now, I mean, this uh, is the Angela, that, there you go. I, I... Yeah, I know. You just mentioned that. But before you, you, you comment on this, let's run the ad, because we all said, oh, they're going to take that sound bite. That's they're right. going to make an ad about this, Republicans are, and use it against him. Listen to this. Their change, reduce funding for police, eliminate employer-based health insurance, pack the Supreme Court, chip away at our religious freedom and gun rights. Georgia, don't let these radicals change America. A lot is at stake here. Whoever wins this, uh, these two, the Democrats need both of them and Republicans need one. And I understand you're actually going to Georgia. I know a lot of Republican officials are going to Georgia to help out. What are you going to do? Yeah, Ainsley, I was in Georgia before the election campaigning, and I'll be back there. So many other Republicans will. You might want to put on some extra stuffing for Thanksgiving and hang an extra Christmas stocking for us in Georgia because the stakes of this Georgia election are so high. As you heard, Chuck Schumer wants to change America. 
He wants to pack our Supreme Court. The Democrats want to make Washington, D.C. a state. They want to eliminate the Electoral College. They want to grant amnesty and voting rights to 15 million illegal immigrants. Raise your taxes, take your guns, defund our police. Those are the stakes of this election. If Georgia sends a trust fund socialist like John Ossoff and Jeremiah Wright's best supporter in Georgia, Raphael Warnock to the United States Senate. I don't think they're going to do that. They're going to reelect David Perdue and Kelly Leffler. Right. I know he uh, was just a junior minister when Fidel Castro was asked to speak at his church. So he also, the, uh, yesterday was brought up Kelly Leffler when it comes to Raphael Warnock, is uh, looking into the fact that um, Warnock and another minister were accused of hindering an investigation to child abuse at a church run camp back in 2002. So stuff that was glanced over earlier because of the jungle primary. Uh, with uh, Doug Collins in it, now there's going to be a laser-like focus, so we'll see where that goes, because there's going to be a lot of people moving in to yeah. uh, Stacey Abrams' house or something in Georgia to establish residency. Uh, so it's going to be uh, chaos up until January 5th, Tom. Yeah, Brian, I think with Raphael Warnock's record in particular, it's going to be exposed. As you said, there was like 25 candidates running in that race, and Raphael Warnock skated without any exposure of his record. In addition to those allegations of child abuse at a camp he ran, I mean, he genuinely was Jeremiah Wright's best supporter in Georgia. Let's just remember what Jeremiah Wright said from his pews or from his uh, church in Chicago is Barack Obama and Michelle Obama didn't just sit in his church for 20 years. Jeremiah Wright married the two of them. Jeremiah Wright said things like 9-11 were America's chickens coming home to roost. He said, not God bless America, he said, God damns America. He was so radical, so extreme, that Barack Obama ultimately repudiated the man who married him to his wife. Yet Raphael Warnock still said he deserves to be celebrated. Jeremiah Wright said vile, grotesque, anti-Semitic things. Raphael Warnock has said that Israel is built on apartheid, built on racism, as if Israel was not the Jew, the biblical homeland of the Jewish people, and they stole that land from the Palestinians and have been oppressing them ever since. This is the record of Raphael Warnock that has not been exposed and that will be exposed over the next two months. I think you just did it. Uh, James Carville, the Democratic strategist who's worked on that side for decades and has been very successful, he talked a little bit yesterday on another channel, actually two days ago on Tuesday, I talked a little bit about that Senate race, but he also talked a little bit about how the House lost races on the Democratic side, and this was his observation. Listen to this, Senator. Some of these broke people need to take a nap, all right? I mean, we, we got we have some good candidates out there. We lost some 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 close races, and we got to get back up and win these two races in Georgia. Some of the things that we're hearing from some of the more extreme elements of, of the Democratic Party, and I don't think that was helpful. He doesn't think it was helpful, but Senator, so if you are Joe Biden and the people who are trying to put together his team, you know, we had heard before the election that while he was running as a centrist, some of the people who were in his more extreme portion of the party were saying, as soon as he gets elected, we're going to pull him to the left. That's the problem right now. What's he going to do? Yes, yeah, Steve, here's all you need to know about the House of Representatives. Nancy Pelosi lost seats, but the squad won seats. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and the rest of her members of the squad are adding new members. So many, in fact, that they can deny Nancy Pelosi a majority on any single bill, whether it's defunding the police or raising taxes or confiscating guns or simply renaming a post office. That's one reason why you have people like uh, James Carville and Jim Clyburn, who are liberals. They're not moderates. They're liberals. But they've been around long enough they can count votes who are telling people like the squad to stop arguing for defunding the police because it's politically hurtful. Not because it's a bad idea, because it's bad politics. Yeah, well, Yet the Democrats are running the number one advocate for defunding the police down in Georgia, Raphael Warnock. That's why it's so important that we win these Georgia races because it's the squad that will determine what bills are passed out of the House of Representatives. We don't want a Democratic majority in the Senate passing the squad's legislation once it comes over from the House. Are you sure you, sure you can't run in Georgia? Should you check the rules? <laughs> it seems like you're ready to go. <laughs> One state at a time. You know, I had, I had a good many months in Georgia at Fort Benning, so uh, <laughs> it was a, I have fond sounds... memories of my time down there and look forward to, like I said, being back for the holidays. Right. And Lee, since that time, you've grown yeah. your hair out. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little bit more so than when I was in Ranger School and Officer Candidate right. School, for sure. Well, thank you, Senator, for all of your service. We appreciate you being on with us this morning.
Thank you all. Okay, Jillian has some headlines for us.